Our aquatic ecosystems are important because they are among the most pristine that remain in North America, for sure, in the, in the contiguous 48 United States. These aquatic ecosystems support functionally intact ecosystem processes, which extend both from what's within the waters to the terrestrial environment. Yellowstone's aquatic ecosystems are incredibly diverse. The one thing also I would say about Yellowstone's aquatic ecosystems is that yeah, just about every freshwater species in, uh, that exists could probably find a place suitable to live here, which makes it then also vulnerable to invasion over time if we're not protecting these places. There are several subspecies of cutthroat trout of which two of them still persist in Yellowstone. That's Yellowstone cutthroat trout and West Slope cutthroat trout. They're unique because here in Yellowstone they support an ecosystem that includes a lot of important animals that other people come to the park to see, like grizzly bears and river otters. So the native cutthroat trout of Yellowstone National Park are being threatened by non-native introduced fishes that were brought into the park actually intentionally in the late 1800s and early 1900s. The lake trout were introduced to what were fishless Lewis and Shoshone lakes in the upper Snake River, but somehow they made their way to Yellowstone Lake. The non-native lake trout are highly predatory species, so the lake trout had a huge impact on the native cutthroat population of Yellowstone Lake and caused a severe decline in the cutthroat trout. An example of the level of the cutthroat trout decline can be seen as one of the primary spawning streams called Clear Creek. We have counts of the spawning cutthroat trout at Clear Creek that date back to the 1940s. Around 1980, Nearly 70,000 fish were counted ascending Clear Creek to spawn in the spring. That declined over time due to the lake trout to the point where in the late 2000s, we counted only about 600 fish ascending Clear Creek to spawn that year. So that's the level of magnitude of change that occurred due to the lake trout invasion of Yellowstone Lake. Lake trout do not ascend streams during the spring to spawn. They spawn actually within the lake itself. So the lake trout are not accessible then to ospreys and bald eagles. They're not accessible to grizzly bears, black bears on spawning streams in the spring because they're, they're not there. So if the cutthroat trout were to disappear and we were to allow the lake trout to thrive within the lake, all the animals that have depended on the cutthroat trout would also be displaced or gone. We've been removing over 300,000 lake trout per year. But now, finally, in 2018, we're seeing a significant decline in the numbers of lake trout in the lake and the numbers of lake trout that we're catching by our netting program, which is a huge signal to us that this program is really working. Anglers do play a role at suppressing lake trout in Yellowstone Lake. We have a must-kill regulation so if an angler does catch one out there, they're required to keep it or at least kill it before they put it back in the lake. We know that tens of thousands of lake trout are removed annually by anglers from Yellowstone Lake, which is a huge benefit to us. Our goals here are to suppress the lake trout and allow the cutthroat trout to rebound 
and recolonize naturally on their own. What we're hoping to see ecologically is a return of these animals that depend on our cutthroat trout as an important source of food through different times of the year, especially our grizzly bears and black bears, which are already seen, come back to some of the spawning streams in the spring. We want to see a further rebound of those animals coming back to feed upon spawning cutthroat trout. One key indicator will be our osprey population around Yellowstone Lake because ospreys only eat fish. And so once the cutthroat declined, um, the ospreys then were largely displaced from the lake ecosystem. We want to see those osprey come back and feed upon the cutthroat trout the way they once did. One important thing that visitors can do to prevent the introduction of aquatic invasive species to make sure that anything they bring into the park is totally clean. If you're bringing a boat to Yellowstone National Park, you need to make sure that it's not carrying any water from any other water body. So drain your bilge, drain your live well, because that water can contain essentially microscopic animals that could invade Yellowstone Park. This park is really intact when it comes to aquatic invasive species, and so we still have time to prevent the introduction of anything else that could cause tremendous ecological harm. It's essentially the best of what we have in our country right now. You know, the majority of this ecosystem remains naturally intact, naturally functioning, and we need to keep it that way. That's the mission of the National Park Service.